everybody, it's Bourbon Bill, and tonight, a very special episode focused on a limited release rye that few have heard of. That's right, it's old Overholt. 2020 release, PA release, I might add. And you might say, but Bourbon Bill, crap, it's 2023. You are correct. Big shout out to my buddy Mike, who gave this to me to review for you fine folks this evening. In 2020, I was just getting into bourbon, didn't have a channel yet. Uh, saw this on the shelf in PA and just wasn't into rise then either, really at all. So passed it up. Mike just recently gifted this to me. I don't know if he, I don't know if he bought it recently or he's had it. Um, but, you know, it's got this surly-looking old-ass man on the front. It says, born in PA, made in Kentucky. Then we get the little red symbol here that says, 2020 PA release. And this is, as you might imagine, 114 proof. Compute, compute, 57% alcohol by volume. And you might say, old Overholt. Who makes that? Jim Beam. That's right. This is a Jim Beam rye. Now this is a straight rye whiskey, non-chill filtered, aged a minimum of four years. It says four year straight rye whiskey. So I'm kind of excited to tear into this one now that I'm more into ryes. Um, it does have though one mark against it. The old screw cap. Shut up. The old screw cap. You know, I just prefer a cork. I know the screw cap's probably better, more airtight, but I do prefer a cork. Now on the back, we get a few notes here that says, A storied four-year rye. This whiskey pays tribute to our ryes produced during the Prohibition era. Okay. All right. It's a long time ago. Non-chill filtering. Helps retain a naturally full and robust flavor profile and cut to 114 proof. Abraham Overholt began distilling rye in Western PA in 1810. To honor our 210th anniversary, we're celebrating the birthplace of rye with this special release. So there you go, a lot of words on the back, but they're trying to honor PA here, and this was a PA only release. So if you're one of my viewers not from PA, um, Sorry about that. If you're interested, I'll send you a sample. Go ahead and shoot me an email. Um, the best thing about this bottle was that it was 30 doll hairs in 2020 when it could be found on the shelf. Now, they have another release that I've seen more recently. They have like just like a 100 proof bottled and bond release. Uh, back in 2020, they released this and they released an 11 year old at like 90 some proof. Did not try that one, never tried it. If you've tried that one, go ahead and drop a comment below if you've enjoyed it. So I'm just curious, what four-year-old 114 proof Jim Beam Rye on an old PA label tastes like? Let's give it a nosing. Gosh, it smells very sweet, like a, like a breakfast syrup. I get like a breakfast bready note. This smells like Pillsbury Rolls, fresh out of the spiral carton. I get some rye spice, some caramels in there. Actually, probably like toffee is a better word, but this is just like a caramel piece of bread. Let's take a sip. $30 has never tasted so good. Um, wow, it's got a good finish. 114 proof is spot on. This basically has what, exactly what I said on the palate. This is uh, just like a cinnamony caramel toffee bread with a good bit of rye spice and heat throughout. For 30 bucks, it's a buy. Um, I would probably give this like a, a B- minus rating. I don't know that I would pick this as my everyday rye uh, but for 30 bucks I think it's definitely one you should have picked up in 2020 let's take one more sip 
I'll tell you what I really appreciate about this. No youth notes. No youth notes. Four-year-old rye. No youth notes. I mean, I can't tell you how many things I've tried that are older than four years old and are full of youth notes. So, if you are a whiskey producer and you can't produce a whiskey, a bourbon, or a rye without youth notes, get out of the game. Okay? Because it can be done and no excuses. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, this wouldn't be Bourbon Bill's channel if we didn't have some sort of comparison. So I thought to myself, what other ryes do I have in the 114 proof range and from the same distillery? Knob Creek Single Barrel Select Rye coming in at 115 proof. This bad boy is like six years, six and a half years, somewhere in there. Now this is a store pick. Doesn't matter from where. It is a fine wine and good spirit store pick, but believe me, if they manage to do it, anybody could do it. Uh, all the Knob Creek Single Barrel Rise store picks come in at 115 proof. So we're talking one proof point more, same distillery, and two more years of aging. Okay, now, are we intrigued now? Uh, this, well, I think this was like 60 bucks, 55, 60 bucks, somewhere in that range. So, double the price. It is double the price of this old Overholt. Let's see what it tastes like. Got my little mini Glen Cairn here. All right, now we should, you know, we should have some, you think these would smell similar. Right? Let's give it a nosing. Oh, not really. I gotta say not really on the nose. This smells like Knob Creek. It's got that oaky brown sugar caramel note going on that all Knob Creek possesses. If you have drank Knob Creek, you know what I'm talking about. Gosh, this is just, man, just all brown sugar, caramel, oak and rye spice on the Knob Creek here. Let's take a sip. By the Knob Creek. The Knob Creek is just what I said. It's all caramel, toffee, brown sugar, nice backbone of oak. You can taste the extra two years. Nice long finish, thicker on the mouth. Good rye spice notes. Um, wow. Yeah, okay. I'd buy the Knob Creek over the old Overhold 114 any day of the week. Even though it's double the price, it's doubly as good. Now, that's really the closest comparison I had. I'm sorry, I don't have any other like less expensive ryes on hand. But I will give you a comparison to one of my favorite rye distilleries of all time. Those that watch this channel have seen this bottle many times. Sagamore Spirits. Now this happens to be a store pick because I don't actually have a bottle of this, just their regular cash drink. But the regular cash drink comes in around 114, 115. This one's 110, seven years old. So we're bumping up, a, we're bumping up in age. Price on this bad boy was like 60. So again, double the price, all right? Got the old Sagamore poured up here. That blows both of them out of the water. Skip both of those. Go buy a Sagamore Cash Strength or a Store Pick if you can find one. There's so much more going on here. We got tons of red fruits, cherries, strawberries, oak, caramel. It's like a fruit cocktail with a backbone of oak and caramel. Absolutely a killer, stellar rye. Um, spoiler alert, if you have not watched my top 10 rye whiskeys of 2022, please go do so now and do not listen to what comes next. For those that have already watched that, you'll know this plays second in my rye of the year. No way these two are standing up to it. Wait, I might have one more. Don't have the bottle anymore, but I do have a sample of rare breed rye. Coming in at 112.2 proof. 
also sixty dollars. All right, the old rare breed rye. Oh, this is way more citrusy and zesty on the nose. It's got that wild turkey, you know, funk going on that... I don't know any other way to describe that. It's the wild turkey funk. If you've had wild turkey, you know what I'm talking about. It's all brown sugar, very little oak. A lot of citrus on this bad boy, though. You could say lemon. I get a little bit of lemon note on this one. Let's take a sip. It's just a little more mature and complex tasting than the old Overholt. It's got the lemon, nice citrus pop, a lot of brown sugar in there. Very good. The best one of the night, though, is, is without a doubt the Sagamore. Rare breeding and the Knob Creek here are going to come down to what you prefer. Do you prefer more oak and dark brown sugar, or do you prefer more citrus and brighter notes? Um, all of these are better and definitely worth double the price of the old Overholt. So if you like what we saw tonight, please like, comment, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button, folks. Have a good evening, everybody.